Among the far-reaching programs of the first Stalinist five-year plans, the general plan for the reconstruction of Moscow adopted in 1935 overshadowed all others in terms of grandeur. Under the plan, Moscow was to be transformed almost overnight into a modern capital of the world's first socialist state. In 1934, a construction tender was announced for the building of the People's Commissariat of Heavy Industry on Red Square. This grand edifice, with a volume of 110,000 cubic meters spread over an area of four hectares, would have led to radical reconstruction of Red Square, but it was never built. The tender for the Palace of the Soviets in Moscow was one of the largest and representative architectural competitions of the last century. The idea of erecting a building in the capital of the world's first state for workers and peasants as a symbol of the eminent triumph of communism first appeared in the 1920s. The tender for the Palace of Soviets project was announced in 1931 and consisted of several stages. The Palace of the Soviets was conceived as the largest building on earth. At 415 meters high, it would have eclipsed the two tallest buildings of the day, the Eiffel Tower and the Empire State Building, but again, it was never built. In 1931, Moscow City Council launched a closed tender for the construction of a thousand room hotel intended to be the most luxurious of its time. Of the six bids received, the project of young architectural duo El Saleyev and O. Stapren was selected. The Moskva Hotel, as it became known, was completed in 1934. A tender for the Palace of Technology was announced in 1933. An area on the banks of Moskva River was selected as a construction site. The Palace of Technology was never built. The buildings of architect El Rudniv are among the most prominent in Moscow. He led the design team on the project to build the high-rise edifice of Moscow State University on Lenin, now Sparrow Hills, in 1953. His design project for Arbat Square, which was only partially implemented, reflects the architect's transformation from the gloomy splendor of buildings of the People's Commissary of Defense of the 1930s to the buoyant pomposity characteristics of architecture of the 1940s and early 1950s. The Aeroflow building, planned to be sited at Belorusky Station, was designed by architect D. Chichulin. As a monument to the heroism of Soviet aviation, the project was not realized as originally conceived. Namnigi, home of the book, is a typical example of the early 30s concept of a building as an architectural monument. In the 1920s, architect I. Gogoslov made a name for himself in the area of constructivism. The bids he submitted for the Palace of the Soviets and the People's Commissariat projects were highly original. Goloslav distinguishing features are defined as symbolic romanticism. L. Pavlov, designer of the Hero's Arch, suggested sitting his monument on Red Square. It was not built. V. Oletzarchevsky immersed himself in architectural theory and high-rise construction methods. He paid particular attention to the manifold techniques of designing and engineering high-risers. Unfortunately, his project was not implemented. In 1947, the Soviet government issued a decree on the construction of high-rise buildings in Moscow. By the early 1950s, high-rise buildings had been built on Lenin Hills, Smolensk Square, Lermontov Square, Komsomolovskaya Square, Kutuzovsky Prospect, Kotelnitskaya Embankment, and Vostyanya Square. Only the construction of a 32-story administrative building in Zaryadai, slated as one of the main landmarks of the city's center skyline, was not complete. Behold what Moscow could have been if the projects of Stalin's architects had actually been realized. If you like this video and you'd like to see more of them, then head over to my Patreon page and show your support. Or you can go to the MRN Bookstore and check out some of the latest books available. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and share on various social media.